Hello, good evening. Welcome to our Sunday night services. This is the Northfield Church of Christ. My name is Michael. Thanks for joining us. Every Sunday around 6 p.m., we're planning on a 25-30 minute devotional with our minister, Mark Sign. We hope that you enjoy it. If you're new and you'd like to find out more about us, visit our website at www.northfieldchurchofchrist.com. Also, we have a Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Northfield Church of Christ. Take a moment and visit those, and I think you'll find it very informative. Also, if you take a second and subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's that little red box right about over here. That helps us out tremendously, too, as well. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this devotional. Have a great evening. Good evening. Welcome to the first in a hopeful series of PM services uh, that we'll be having each Lord's Day. As you know, this morning we had services that were live streamed. Uh, this service will be on YouTube. And so I have uh, sent an email out to everyone. So everyone is cognizant that uh, this is what is going to be happening for the next several weeks. And so, uh, let's begin our service by turning to hymn number 83. So, if you have a songbook, number 83, although I'm sure all of you know the words to this song without the book. <clears throat> God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, he's so good to me. He cares for me, he cares for me, he cares for me, he's so good to me. I love him so, I love him so, I love him so, he's so good to me. He answers prayer, he answers prayer, he answers prayer, he's so good to me. Before our opening prayer, uh, would you turn to hymn number 777 in your book? Seven, seven, seven. <clears throat> Father, hear the prayer we offer, nor for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously not forever by still waters would we idly quiet stay but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. Be our strength in hours of weakness. In our wanderings be our guide. Through endeavor, failure, danger. Father, be thou at our side. Let our path be bright or dreary. Storm or 
sunshine be our share. May our souls in hope unweary make thy work our ceaseless prayer. Would you bow in prayer with me? Our God in heaven, we are so grateful for the blessings of life. Uh, as we're going through this unusual time in our lives, uh, we just pray that uh, you would continue to uh, be with us, uh, that you would continue to give us the strength and the comfort uh, that we need to leave it, live each day, even though our days are a little different than they used to be. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to not forget our families. Help us to not forget the strength that we find from them. Help us to stay in communication with them, either by prayer, by email, by note, uh, by text, that uh, we would not lose touch. I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, you would just continue to, to guide us and help us uh, to stay on the path that leads us to heaven. We know, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, we're tempted often, but uh, we also know that your word tells us that there is no temptation out there that you have not given us the strength to overcome. Bless us. Uh, keep us from sin. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to desire to follow you always. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. As I told you, uh, this evening's lesson will be entitled Eternal Security. Now, that term security uh, has kind of a lot of implications to it. Out on my front lawn of my home, I have two signs. They say Slomans. That is one of the companies out there that secures your home. And we have a little uh, keypad and when we leave the house, or even when we're in the house, we can secure our homes. We lock our doors. Yes, I know probably if you're old enough, there was a time when folks didn't lock their doors all the time, but we do now. Now, all of these security measures uh, serve a couple of purposes for us. One, uh, they protect us physically. And sometimes, and, and, I, and it, I don't mean to sound crass, but uh, things do mean something to us. Um, we have security because we have material things in our home that mean something to us. However, that's not what this evening's lesson is all about. Do we have security in regards to our spiritual well-being. Because, let's face it, we ought to be more concerned about the spiritual security of our souls than about the material things that we have accumulated here on earth. Now, I'm not telling you to leave your door unlocked. I'm not telling you to get rid of your security system. I'm just letting you know that we need to prioritize. The Apostle John said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. John said that we can have eternal salvation. He said that our eternal salvation is secure. While Jesus was on the earth, uh, he talked about that same security in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. Jesus said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, 
and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Those are wonderful words for us, aren't they? We're the sheep. We're the ones that are supposed to be tender to Jesus' call. And Paul, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, kind of echoed this when he said, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that Jesus and John and Paul are talking about eternal security. Not only does John give us the assurance that we have eternal life, but he also tells us that we may have this assurance. Now again, if we go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 and verse 9, he says these words, If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And here we go. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, the thing that separates human beings from God is sin, according to Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. And when we were baptized into Jesus Christ, um, that uh, we, were, we were baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. And symbolically, through that, we reach the blood of Christ. And what does it do? Well, what John told us it does. It cleanses us from sin. Now, let's get into this scripture. John says, if we walk in the light. Now, Christ is the light. And according to the word of God, Jesus' blood continually flows to keep us clean from sin. Now, I want us to notice something here. The term cleanses. It says to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That cleanse is in the present tense. And it means one is continually being cleansed from his or her sin. Now, this cleansing is conditional. Go back to the beginning. We're supposed to be walking in the light. It's conditional as long as we continue to walk in the light. We can be cleansed from our sins. There's a difference in one committing a sin and one living in sin or living a life of sin. One living a life of sin is one who is no longer trying to live as a Christian. Therefore, that person is not walking in the light. Now, there is a teaching out there, it's a Calvinist teaching, that says eternal security means once saved, always saved. Once we take Jesus into our life, why, we're saved for good. Now, not all of God's promises, I, I should say this, all of God's promises are conditional promises. Notice the, continue, the, the conditions that are mentioned. What if one stops believing in Christ after they become a Christian? What if one stops listening to the voice of Jesus after he becomes a Christian? What if one quits following Jesus Christ after they become a believer. It says, no one can snatch us out of Christ's hand. But what if somebody wants to get out of Christ? Now, interestingly enough, in Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse 16, and it was, uh, Revelation was written to the seven churches of Asia, 
Notice these very telling words in Revelation 3.16. To the church at Laodicea, Jesus said, Because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. These were church people. They had just become laissez-faire. They've just, they lost their, their uh, real commitment to the Lord. And the Lord said to them, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And so the question is asked, even though security, eternal security is promised to us, can we lose it? What if we quit locking our houses? What if we turn off the security system? The locks are there. The security system is here. What if we don't use them? How secure are there? Are we? Jesus is there. God is there. They're saying to us, you can have the security of eternal life. How about if we just give it up? Now, the Bible talks several times about people losing their security. To Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, he talks about uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander. And then Peter also chimed in in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. And he said, For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. The last state has become worse to them than the first, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment handed down to them. It's like the pig returning to the slop. And so Peter also indicates, as Paul did, that we can lose this security, this once saved, always saved, is not a valid doctrine. And so, in essence, that once saved, always saved isn't really security. And if they would really be honest about it, that they know that there were men and women in the church in times past who just became deeply involved in sin, and lost their salvation. What do they say about those folks? They have to admit that the security of salvation is conditional. We must meet the conditions. Now, here's what they might say. What they might say is, well, you know what? Those people weren't really saved anyway. That's a scapegoat way. That's a chicken's way out. You know, if we brought these people to the Lord, we just can't put them in denial. We have to assume that when they took the Lord into their life, they were sincere about it. They had a change of heart. And that change of heart jeopardized their security. There's an old saying that sums up their thinking. And here's what it is. If you are saved, you can't lose it. But if you lose it, then you never had it. That's a sorry way to go through life looking. What we want and the way we want to go through life looking is that we are in the light and that we stay in the light of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, if we've been immersed into Christ in baptism for the remission of sins, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. But you don't think you would go to heaven if you died today. You need to ask yourself a question. What's keeping me from going to heaven when I die? Whatever that is, if there is something, you need to correct it. You know, when I used to give my, my students tests in school, I would correct the tests, I would hand them back to the students, and we would go over the test. We would spend some time. I wanted them to see where they made their mistakes. 
And I wanted to see, I wanted them to see why their answer was wrong so they can correct that wrong answer. And that's what we have to do with our lives. Anything that keeps us from getting to heaven, we need to expel from our life. And so we need to be confident. And I ask you this question, how confident are you? Are you confident enough to say with 100% confidence, if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. And we must look at it that way because we are the ones that need to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. And so if you've listened to this message about eternal security and you haven't begun your walk with the Lord, I pray that uh, we can help you to do that. If you haven't confessed Jesus as the Son of God and been baptized through the remission of your sins, uh, we hope that uh, you would come around and understand that you need to. And we have folks at this church that will readily help you to get yourself on the right path. If you've sinned and you've fallen away and you need to confess those sins to get back into Jesus and God's good graces, please do that. Confess them to the Lord. Confess them to one another. I pray that this message has been beneficial to all of you. Um, and may God bless you all. We're going to sing a song in closing. And if you have your song books, please turn them to uh, hymn number 148. We're going to finish with an upbeat song. 148. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over, and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Please pray with me. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you found this worship this evening acceptable in your sight. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, as we go into this Lord's Day evening, that we will do so with the uh, knowledge that uh, you've promised us eternal security. You've promised us if we walk in the light of Jesus and obey his teachings, that we can live with you eternally. I pray to Heavenly Father that we will do nothing to jeopardize that. And if there is something in our life that's, that's holding us back, help us to correct it. Help us to stay true to you and true to our commitment to you. Help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together. Help us to look forward to the next time that uh, we can uh, break down your word a little bit and uh, make it useful to us. I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.